welcome back to CS Honors in Illinois. In this lesson video, we'll be talking about Git and specifically branching and merging as well as merge conflicts in Git. But before we get to that, let's talk about CS128 Honors for a second. If you've been enjoying the Git lectures so far, you might really enjoy CS128 Honors. It's a course that has similar lectures to this that are all student run and builds on the core content of CS128 using Rust, which is a programming language that for six years in a row has been voted Stack Overflow's most loved language. And so for more info, you can check out the video link in the description, and we hope to see you there. So let's get back to Git. So to recap what we did in the last lecture, we talked about linear histories, including how we can add files to tell Git what we want to take a snapshot of. We can commit them or take that snapshot of the file at a certain time. We can then push them to an external server so that other people can access our commits. And then we can pull other people's commits from that same server. And so now let's talk about what we're going to do today. So today we're going to talk about Git branching. And we're going to talk specifically about why we need branches, what they are, and then what are the steps that we can go through to use them. We'll also talk about merge conflicts, which is part of branching and basically when merges go wrong, when you take two branches and try to make them one again. And we'll also talk about how you can potentially prevent them as well. So let's talk about why we need branches. So we're gonna go through a simple little exercise to show an example of why a linear history might fail us. So if we have an initial commit, maybe a login page, a start page, then we add some sort of logo, we don't know where this logo was added, right? It could be for the login page or it could be for the home page, right? And maybe adding the logo to the home page messes with the login page and breaks it, right? So adding these things might actually prevent us from being able to use other uh, features at the same time. So if we keep going, yeah, you can see everything works on the end, but we still know where that commit came from. And it could have also made it harder for us to finish the home page or the login page. So what is a branch? Well, branch basically allows us to separate those two features out. So now, instead of working on them at the same time, these snapshots are ignoring the parts that are elsewhere. So by creating a new branch, you're now only looking at the changes where you made the login page, or you're only looking at the changes where the home page was changed, right? And so now you have each of them finished in their own way. And once you're done, you can then recombine them or merge the two branches together to get an initial sort of linear history back. And this way, each feature can be worked on separately. And then once they're finished, you can add them back together and make sure that they both work together as well. So how do you use branches? Well, branches are really simple to work with. So there are a few steps. So first off, we have what's called checking out or telling it, hey, any new snapshots that I make no longer apply to the branch I'm already on. By default, you're on a branch called main, which will allow you to work on branches or commits by default, but you also want to be able to work on new ones. So you can check out to a new branch and then make your commits onto that branch instead. So to do that, we can then make a commit and now we have a commit on a separate branch. And so then we can add our logo, do everything else like normal. And then when we want to recombine, we merge the two branches together. And we'll show how that works in a minute. However, not everything is always perfect, right? So let's say we have these two branches, right? And we're making changes to them. And we add strawberries, we add oranges. And now we have in the same place, we have two different things, right? How do you merge these two things together, right? Normally, you work on two different files. Nothing conflicts. No problem. But when you have two things that the same lines were changed, you now need to worry about that. And so Git is smart. It will handle most of this for you, right? It will not make you deal with this unless there is a direct conflict in the lines that were changed. So how do we solve this? Well, with merge conflicts, which is a really scary term to a lot of people who start using Git. So here's what a merge conflict would look like. You'll usually be told about it when you try and merge two branches together, and we'll show how to merge them in a minute. But what you'll have is essentially a couple of things. You'll have a head and then a weird set of brackets and then another weird set of brackets and a commit, right? That's a commit identifier, that BD38B2C. And in between, you'll have some equal signs and then your two different uh, changes, right? 
So we now have a part that is showing the strawberries as the new part to, to the list and then the oranges as a new part to the list. So these are the parts that we want to focus on and specifically we want to focus on our changes versus changes on another branch. And so now in this case, our shopping list, we want to keep both because both things have been added. So we're going to remove all the stuff that tells us, hey, here's what, what went wrong when we tried to merge and we're just gonna clean everything up. And there we go, we now have our new resolved conflict uh, cleaned up. And then we can recommit that and then it'll merge just fine. So let's show how you can use branches and then we'll show how you can clean up a merge conflict in your environment. So with git checkout, we can check out a new branch and we can also create a new branch, right? So we can either move branches or we can create new ones. So to use it, all we have to do is git checkout either an existing branch where we put quotations around it and then we give our existing branch name or we can use the dash B flag to create a new branch, right? And git checkout dash B will say, okay, if one doesn't exist, let's go create a new one. All right, so we're back in our shopping list environment and what we're gonna do here is show how to check out and uh, create new branches uh, using git. So to start off, we're gonna check what branch we're on using git status and you can see we're on branch main. You can also see other branches that are available by doing git branch. So now we know that there are no other branches available, but let's create one. So we're gonna do git checkout and dash B for a new branch. And then we're gonna say uh, add vegetables. And once we do that, you're gonna see if we do git branch, we're now on add vegetables instead of main. So what we can do is we can say vegetables and we can add potato. Um, great. So now that we have that in there, we can now uh, add the readme. We can commit it and uh, add vegetables. Okay, so now that we've committed, we can now uh, go and make our other changes as we need to. But what's important is if we do git checkout and we go back to main, you'll see that we no longer have the vegetable section, right? And so this is what's great is now I could make a commit that maybe adds strawberries back, right? So we could do strawberries like so. And if I commit that, I uh, added strawberries back. Now when we merge them together, we'll get both our new vegetables section, uh, add vegetables. Uh, we'll get our new vegetable section and our strawberries from the main branch as well. So yeah, to find out how to merge two branches together, let's go back to the slides. All right, the opposite of branching is merging. And merging will take one branch and merge it into another branch. It'll take all those commits and combine them. And so fun fact, git merge is actually run under the hood when you run git pull. And so that's why you might actually get a merge conflict if you try and pull something and you happen to have modified the same lines. So to use git merge, all you have to do is do git merge and then the other branch that you want to merge from, right? You want to take the other branch and take all of those commits from it. And so be aware that you can cause merge conflicts when you do this. And so as you can see, when we run git merge topic from our main branch here, it's going to take all the commits from topic and it will join them together in that new commit H. All right, so now that we're back in our environment, let's merge these two branches together. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna first check out main and then what we're gonna do is we are going to merge add vegetables and now what you'll see is we get both our vegetable section and our strawberries from the main section. And so now we can add a special uh, commit message, but we're just gonna say merge the branch and we're gonna save that. And so now if we go into the log, you'll see that we now have merging the branch, we have the strawberries, and then we have our adding vegetables, right? Now you can also do git branch dash D and do add vegetables. And that will now clean up the branch. So if you do git branch, now we just have the main branch again. And if we do git log dash dash one line to show the log of commits, now you can see that it's nice and clean. All right, so now let's take a look at git merging with a conflict. 
So just like before, it'll merge together, everything like that. And here's the catch, right? Now when we do this, what you're going to see is that we're going to run into a merge conflict that we have to solve. So let's take a look at that. Okay, so let's take a look at making a merge with conflicting branches. So as you can see here, I've updated our vegetables to have potatoes plural instead of potato singular. And if we check out the other branch, then what you'll see is that now we've replaced it with carrot. So what happens when we try to merge these two together? So we're going to, once again, go back to main. And now what we're going to do is get merge change potato. And you'll see we get a conflict. And VS Code is actually really nice about it. It will show you a much bigger highlight to show you what's going on. So as you can see here, we have the head, we have the uh, other branch, and we have our changes in between. So in this case, we can actually accept both changes, right? And so VS Code can actually just let us click that button and it'll automatically do it for us. Otherwise, we can go in and just remove each part of the merge conflict and clean it all up like so. And there we go. Now we have our changes. And now we can do uh, a new commit, fix merge conflict. And there you go. So now our branches are both back up to, or our branches are now merged and the merge conflict is solved where we took both. Now you can obviously take one or the other or however the situation calls for, but that's how you can fix a merge conflict. So let's talk about pull requests. Pull requests are GitHub's way of allowing people to review your code before it gets merged into a branch. And this is really useful for larger companies because you're able to have people take a look at your code and make sure that there are no bugs in it before it actually gets added to a product. And so you simply go and push your code to GitHub just like normal on this new branch. And then you go to the pull request tab and click open. It's that simple. And you can also do things like add labels, attach media, assign who should be reviewing it, and maybe even automatically run unit tests so that you can check what your code is doing. All right, so now that we're on our GitHub repository, you'll see that I created a new branch, which is adding the fruit subsection which just adds that label right there. So we can take a look at that commit. And as you can see right here, we just added the fruits uh, header there. So now GitHub is kindly prompting us right there, but we're going to go to pull requests and hit new pull request. And here we can now choose which branch we want to merge in. And in this case, we're choosing to take the add fruits subsection and merge it into the main branch. And so we can hit create pull request and add any comments we want added a new label and we can do other things like we can assign ourselves we can add a label like uh, this would be an enhancement and we can put projects milestones all kinds of other stuff and once we create it now other people if you assign any reviewers can go and review the code and so what they can do is they can go over here give you some feedback they can even go and say I really really like this code and once they uh, do that, it'll show up in the pull request. You can see that right there. Once you fix anything, if anyone says there's anything wrong, you can uh, give a thumbs up, all that kind of stuff. Uh, once everything's ready to go though, then you can go down here and click merge pull request. And once you do that, it's just like merging it on your computer. It will merge it. You can delete the branch from GitHub. And now if we go back to our main branch, you'll see the fruits is now on the main branch too. So in summary, in this video, we talked about branching, merging, and the new commands associated with them, including checking out and merging, as well as merge conflicts, which comes up when you have two lines that have both been changed that are actually the same line in two branches, and you try to merge them, as well as pull requests. So all this together shows how you can work with a larger team using Git and should hopefully make it a lot easier for you to work in a group project setting. So yeah. That's all that I have for this lecture. If you are in CS 124 honors, we're gonna have another video specifically on how to do branching, merging, merge conflicts, all that in GitHub desktop. Otherwise, if you're in CS 128, this is the last video I'll see you in. Hopefully you'll want to join CS 128 honors. If you do, click the uh, video on the right there and you can check us out.